This is the Guns Magazine podcast, episode number 135. Hi there, and welcome to the Guns Magazine podcast. I'm your host and the editor of Guns Magazine, Brent Wheat. Thanks for joining us as we talk to the interesting folks who make up the world of shooting, hunting, and the firearms industry. But first, before we get started, let's have a quick chat about our sponsor, Luth AR. Luth AR is home of MBA butt stocks, which are affordable, lightweight, fully adjustable butt stocks for your AR-15 fixed and collapsible rifles. But that's not all. Luth AR is your one-stop shop for build kits, replacement parts, and custom accessories, including the chubby grip, palm hand guards, oversized switch safety, and paddle bolt catch. Luth AR is proudly made in the USA, and with four decades of experience, they'll continue their mission of innovate to dominate with high-quality products for your ARs. Find out more at LuthAR.com. Unfortunately, kids and guns are in the news a lot lately, and certainly not in a good way. In last week's episode, we touched on school shootings, but this week I'm going to bring it back to a more personal level and talk about how to keep kids safe around firearms in your home. From my perspective, I'm not talking so much as a parent, but as a grandparent. In my case, I could leave guns lying around openly all day long for weeks at a time, but then we get that little knock on the door. We open it, and there's a herd of toddlers coming in to visit and, of course, generally destroy our home. However, one thing my wife and I make sure of is they never get their hands on guns without adult supervision. Now here's my thoughts on kids and guns in the home. Now that I've officially earned my brevet commission as grandfather first class, the subject of kids interacting with firearms takes on a whole new importance. Firearm safety wasn't an afterthought in our house when my own kids were young, but today, facing periodic household assault by over a half dozen sugar-fueled toddlers, I've started to re-examine how I did it before and how I now plan to successfully introduce a whole new generation to firearms. Obviously, the primary concern for everyone is making sure kids can't access guns without proper supervision until they're old enough to understand the dangers. This point is pounded home constantly by actual gun safety organizations, such as the NRA, and several states have also enacted laws criminalizing unsafe firearm storage. Yet, tragedies still occur. Well, Aside from the just plain stupid people who leave guns lying around when kids are present, let's take a closer look at how non-stupid, properly trained, more or less intelligent people occasionally fail and how to better address the issue of childhood gun safety. Like many people without little ones underfoot, I have firearms stashed throughout my house. After several decades as a cop, I've made a few sworn enemies, and if you add in the current general insanity afflicting our world... I feel compelled to keep firearms handy and ready to use in several locations around our house. The guns aren't lying around in the open, but they're also not secured enough I'd even remotely consider them child safe. This raises my first point, a very common yet erroneous belief among gun owners. That is, don't ever think placing a firearm up high will keep it away from small hands. If you've ever watched a toddler build an improvised ramp out of toys to reach the cookie jar high atop the kitchen counter... You know the top shelf of the closet or bookcase is just a challenge rather than an actual deterrent to a motivated yearling. Trigger locks are a good start, but a trigger lock is only an impediment which doesn't actually prevent unauthorized gun handling. While none of my loaded guns would go off with rough treatment, I would instantly faint dead away if one of my grandkids was messing around with the locked but loaded pistol from my bedside dresser. In my book, Physically Removing Guns from Reach is the only reasonable assurance of keeping children safe. This idea means we've got a whole new responsibility as grandparents to conduct the quote-unquote sweep before any small visitors are allowed into the house. We actually have a procedure for this. Stuck to the inside lid of the family room toy box, I keep a laminated checklist of all the places I've hidden firearms. When the kids show up, they immediately descend on the toy box, so if the list is there when they lift the lid... We forgot to gather up the guns. As a matter of course, when I do gather up the guns, I also gather up the list and put it in the gun safe with the firearms. I'm not too worried about burglars discovering my cheat sheet because, number one, 
They probably won't look in the toy box for family jewels, and number two, the list is intentionally vague as to actual whereabouts. It's more of a reminder than a specific treasure map. By making this list, nothing is overlooked in the busy moments prior to a family visit. After gathering up the various pistols, rifles, shotguns, and anti-tank weapons, then locking them safely away, my wife and I cross-check each other to make sure we did this most important task. Also, with inquisitive toddlers running amok, we also collect the various sample knives and sharp implements lying around my office. This checklist and counter-check process might seem a bit over the top, but we've also seen how unsecured guns can be forgotten when little unexpected visitors show up. After a few scary, wait right there, minutes, my wife and I have both committed to making this sweep our highest priority immediate action drill, or IAD, whenever we hear that little knock on the front door. Of course, we don't necessarily tell our friends we haven't established an IAD procedure for toddler attack, but they probably wouldn't be surprised. After all, I'm a gun writer who once put a gas mask on my elementary-aged daughter and posed her sitting sweetly on her bed with a teddy bear to illustrate an article on preparedness. Don't judge me. We've also made it a point to tell the various parents that we will not be offended if they inquire about the status of our guns. In fact, we ask them to ask us every time they come through the door. Hopefully, among four otherwise grown adults, somebody would remember this important item in spite of the rush to the candy dish, the obligatory round of hugs, and the dozens of runny-nosed kisses. With all kids, including grandchildren, another important safety backstop is training. From a young age, children should understand the dangers of firearms. We teach them about the stuff under the sink and electricity in the wall sockets, so why wouldn't we talk to them about firearms? I've learned that talking to grandkids about guns is a delicate subject if the parents aren't shooters. None of my kids are anti-gun, though I suspect a couple of the mommies might lean that way in private, but I've found the parents are much more understanding when you point out this whole thing is an important safety matter for visiting granddad's house. When you're talking to kids about guns, the common mistake even among gun owners is treating firearms as a quote-unquote forbidden fruit. If something is off-limits, dangerous, verboten, or generally treated as something completely illicit, children of any age will expend all manner of energy and ingenuity to explore it. It's a simple fact of child psychology. If you say, don't touch, without giving a satisfactory explanation why, the child will immediately make it mission number one the first moment you aren't looking. Whenever kids inquire about your guns, use age-appropriate, non-dramatic language to explain they're dangerous if misused much like cleaning chemicals, fire, and the family car. Then, if the kids are old enough, explain the basic firearm safety rules, starting with, an adult has to be there. I also use this opening to discuss enrolling them in a shooting sports program so they can learn both the fun and responsibility of firearms. In this regard, the NRA's Eddie Eagle Gun Safe program really shines. In a nutshell, the program teaches kids to stop, don't touch, run away, tell a grown-up, if they discover an unattended gun. The website eddieeagle.nra.org has extensive information about how to talk to kids about firearms in an effective but fun manner. In my own case, I was pleasantly surprised when I explained Eddie Eagle to my non-shooting children and suggested that I have the talk with their kids. They especially agreed after I pointed out it was much better to anticipate a child might someday end up around an unsupervised firearm Not necessarily at Granddad's house, but anywhere from a playground to a friend's house, than to hope that such a situation never arises. However, in spite of training, the ultimate burden of gun safety is still on the gun owner to make sure kids and unsupervised firearms aren't allowed to mix. I think the most glaring example of such poor judgment is the parent or grandparent who simply says, My kids know not to touch my guns. Really? You really, really Believe the assurances of a child in such a life-or-death matter? Let's look at it this way. I dare any man of a certain age to claim innocence they were unaware of the Play Dude magazine their dad had hidden in the sock drawer. Likewise, by the time you were a teenager, you probably knew where the Christmas presents were hidden, where the key to the liquor cabinet was concealed, and how to slip out of your bedroom window without raising parental suspicion. And you had at least contemplated sampling each prohibited activity or object. So, you still believe your kids would never touch your guns? I'm sorry, you're just wrong. I know, they're nice kids, respectful, honest as the day is long and they've been taught properly, but you're just mistaken in this regard. Keep your guns locked up until your children, and more importantly their friends, 
truly grasp the significance of firearms. I'd say around age 20 would be fine, except in the case of my friends where 70 plus is a more appropriate age. And, by the way, I'm not saying my dad had anything hidden in the sock drawer. It was the underwear drawer. Hopefully you learned a few pointers from this episode so that kids and guns can safely coexist in your home. And with that, I'd like to thank you for listening to the Guns Magazine podcast. Guns Magazine was first on the newsstand, and today we're bringing you the most interesting chats in the gun world. If you've got any questions or comments about the show, please email me. That would be editor at gunsmagazine.com. Make sure you subscribe to us on your favorite podcast directory, YouTube, and of course you can always listen at gunsmagazine.com. And while you're online, don't forget to check out our great sister publications, American Handgunner Magazine at AmericanHandgunner.com, AmericanCop.com, and our numerous special editions available for sale on our websites. Most of all, while you're online, I'd also appreciate it if you would share a favorite episode or some kind words on your own social media. Well, that's it for this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. For the entire staff at FMG Publications, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. Now get out there and get shooting. Get shooting.